To start, you need a circuit board layout that you can print. Uh, it could be something that someone else did or something that you designed yourself. You'll also need a copper clad board. The one that I have here is single sided and pretty dirty, but that doesn't matter. And for the etchant, I'm using two commonly available chemicals. The first is peroxide and you can get that at any drugstore. And then for the acid, I'm using muriatic acid and you can get that at most building supply places. Next step is to cut the copper clad board down to the correct size. And I've got the board set on a piece of MDF so that it won't slide underneath the sled as I'm pushing it through. Next, I can cut out one of these things that I printed and I printed two just in case the first one doesn't come out right. I can start again and I won't have to run back inside and waste another sheet of paper. And I've got more detail in the description that you'll want to read specifically on the type of paper that I'm using that's giving me the best results. Now, this board is about 15 years old. It's been kicking around. It's quite dirty. It needs to be very clean for this to work. And to start, I'm using 220 grit paper going over the whole surface. And then I'm going to use lacquer thinner or you can use acetone to wipe it completely clean. And then when it is clean, you want to handle it by the edges so that you won't contaminate that clean surface with anything that's on your fingers. Then I can take the board and position it over the print and line it up with the border. And I'm going to use pieces of tape, one on each end to hold it in place. I'm using an iron for ironing clothes, just a normal one. This one's kind of beat up. I use it for edge banding. So it's kind of sticky on the base and that was a bit of a problem. I recommend using a clean one. And you want to have this cranked up to the max all the way and don't put any water in it. And then you really want to get this hot and you really want to push it down. That's going to give you the best chance at making a complete transfer. Then I recommend letting it cool a little bit before putting it in hot tap water so that you can get rid of that paper. You want to put it in, leave it to soak for a few minutes, and then start wiping the paper away. I use my thumbs, but you can also use a scotch Brite pad, as long as you're not too aggressive with it. The important thing here is to get the paper off of the bare copper. It doesn't really matter if there's anything left on the black part. I dumped out the water that was in the container and now I'm pouring in the acid. I'm not really measuring this. I'm just putting in the amount that I think is right. And I should point out that the acid gives off fumes that are pretty nasty. So you want to do this in a well ventilated area or stop breathing. And then it's been a long time since I did this, but I think the mix ratio is 50, 50, you know, 50% acid, 50% peroxide. And I'll start with that. But these chemicals that I'm using here are like 10 years old. That was the last time I made a circuit board and I've had these ever since. So they might've gotten weak in that time. Now, when you put the board in, you wanna keep this moving. And I had to add a little bit more peroxide because it was looking too yellow, the solution. It should be more green, or at least that's what I remember anyway. But you can see it's working now. The Copper is actually starting to disappear, and you can see through the board. And then, like I said, you want to keep this moving until it's finished, and then take it out and put it in clean water to rinse away the acid. The only thing left to do is get rid of that toner that's on the copper and I'm using lacquer thinner again with a paper towel to wipe that off. So that's all there is to making a circuit board and even though the traces on the one that I made here are big, you can get really good resolution with this, very fine traces if you need them. I made this board for my upcoming amplifier build. It's to hold the capacitors for the power supply along with the bridge rectifier. And that's what I'm soldering on now.
With the soldering done, I want to clean off the flux, and I'm using lacquer thinner again for that. And I'm doing that because I want to protect the copper. And probably the best way to do that is to tin the entire surface of the copper. But another way is to clean it up like I'm doing here and then put a coat of lacquer on, either spray or the stuff that I have here, I'm just dabbing it on. Just one coat, doesn't have to be thick at all. All you're looking to do is to keep the copper from corroding. 